Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic, and today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about uh, basically tuning and setting up a traditional bow. So if you just bought a new bow, getting things ready, wondering how to set it up, what you got to do with it, that's what we're going to cover today for you. A few steps that got to be done. Now, we're going to assume um, that when you got your bow, it already came with a grip and a rest on there and that kind of stuff. If not, you can do like I did. I put rubber grips on mine. Uh, even when I have my bows made, Steve Ture, Northern Miss Longbows, he builds all my bows for me. Uh, incredible bows. I love them. When I have them made, though, he usually uses leather grips. And I don't like leather grips, so I actually take them off. So as you can see on mine, um, I actually run on mine right here. I have a piece of rubber inner tube. That's just bicycle inner tube that I'm putting on there. And then I take and make my own leather shelves uh, because I kind of like them to have a little slice in the middle in there. As you can see, a little bit of gap in there. Um, right there, you can see it on there. But So I kind of set mine up myself. But when you get yours, it's probably going to already have the grip you want and uh, the shelf on there or whatever. If you're using a recurve, you may not have a rubber grip you might just go straight wood and you might just put velcro soft side of velcro on there whatever you want to do but you'll have that on there next thing that you want to take into account is the string that you're going to use um, Steve sells his bows with a skinny type string they're a, they're a skinny string with a padded loops and they're incredible strings don't get me wrong I don't like them I like my strings a little thicker uh, than pretty much every one of you guys do most of you guys are trying to get the skinniest fastest quickest shooting string out there um, and I understand that totally get it uh, and his bows are fast flight string compatible and all that kind of stuff I kind of go a different route I want my strings thick um, and the reason for it is I hit my arm less with them I don't know what that reason is I don't know why but I don't hit my arm as bad with a thicker string so I automatically am making my own strings and putting them on there right off the bat as soon as I get it um, but now so let's just say that you have your bow and your string that you're going to use and you're set up with that I don't believe that if you change a string later on, it's going to make much of a difference. Now, if you go from like a Dacron string to a Fast Flight or Fast Flight to Dacron, it might impact your arrows a little bit on there, maybe slightly, probably not a real big deal. Uh, but if you're in any of the Fast Flight materials, which like I said, 99% of you guys are going to be, um, you're going to be just fine. doesn't matter what material you use. So, but you're going to get your bow. It's going to come with a string probably. You're going to have it all ready. You're going to take it out of the box. First thing you want to do is you want to have arrows that are close to what that bow weight is for your draw length. See, you cannot tune a bow. Okay, we call it tuning a trad bow. There is no tuning to a trad bow. The only tuning option you got is twisting a string and moving a knock up and down. That's it. We don't tune a traditional bow like you tune a compound. In a compound you can adjust your rest left and right, you can adjust your tiller, you can adjust uh, you know all kinds of things on there in your arrow rest, in your sight pins and stuff. We don't we don't have that luxury here. So for us we tune everything through our arrows. We want to set our bow up and then tune the arrows to match that bow. That's the plan. So you want to have some arrows that are ballpark close. Now, if you already have a couple bows or you already had a traditional bow, got something similar, you're going to kind of know. But to pick an arrow that's close is going to be just a ballpark. So uh, in any pro shop or any, any quick look on a forum can tell you that. Um, you can basically look at your draw length because that matters. It's that distance on how far you're drawing that bow. And the poundage of that bow is going to tell you kind of what arrow you're looking for based on that arrow head weight that you're going to be after and I think there's so many parts to that equation especially today you go back 20 years ago before we were front end loading arrows and things like that um, it was pick a, a shaft a wood shaft or whatever aluminum shaft that fit your 55 to 60 pound range and then you put a 100 or 125 grain head on it and you were done that was your only option so it was really easy then now we're loading them up in the front. My arrows here, these arrows that you see on here, they have 450 grains up front on a 720 gain arrow. It's it's a whole different ball game uh, to tune in that stuff, which I will teach you how to do here in a few minutes. But you want to have arrows that are ballpark close. Okay, if you don't know what that is, ask on a forum, have an idea of what you kind of want bow weight, get some information ahead of time. Um, at, don't be afraid to put a comment in this video. I can maybe help you a little, but keep in mind, I, I haven't shot a conventional type arrow in a long time. So, I mean, mine are all custom double inserts that I make, and my, my arrows are a whole different ball game with 31% FOC. So, um, I, I may not be able to help you a lot, but forums are a great place. A little internet searching um, will, will get you in the right direction. But you want arrows that are pretty close, so they're at least going to fly pretty decent for you um, right off the bat. 
Um, and you don't need a bunch of them, even one or two or borrow one arrow. You don't have to get crazy with this here, you know, right off the bat. Um, we'll get into the arrows, okay, and why you don't want to get too many right off the bat. Um, next thing you want to do, once you got those arrows, that's good. You want to then install your string silencers on here. Okay, now also with the arrows, if you don't have arrows yet, it's not a bad idea to get a test kit, okay? Um, to buy one or two or three arrows, go to an archery shop that has these arrows there. Buy one or two, uh, uh, buy one 400 spine, one 500 spine, and one uh, 350 spine arrow, or whatever you think is going to be. Whatever you're supposed to be shooting, get maybe one shaft stiffer and one staff we or shaft weaker, so you have three different shafts that you can work with. Don't put feathers on them. Leave them alone right now. We'll figure that out, um, which is probably the best way to do it. And then now next thing you want to do is you're going to want to install your silencers on there. You want those silencers on there first because they are going to make a difference on how that string moves forward. There's weight, there's all kinds of variables that come into that. So, and it doesn't matter if you're picking different ones or you change silencers later, but you want to tune your bow with silencers on it if you are going to use silencers. So put them on um, and get them set up on there. Kind of have a ballpark idea. Again, you can adjust stuff. It's all right. But you want them on there in the beginning right off the bat. So you install your silencers. You want a quiver on there. Okay. If you are going to hunt with a quiver, put a quiver on it. Especially if you are shooting a longbow or a one-piece recurve where your quiver is going to mount to the limbs. If you are using a recurve, I should should have grabbed one here for you and showed you, but uh, if you have a recurve and your quiver is going to either screw into or mount on the actual riser, not on the working limb, you can get away with a lot more because that's that, that quiver is not affecting the flight. I still highly recommend you tune your bow with the quiver on, but if you're using a long bow like mine, you can see that this is actually, now these are on a fade out still, so they're pretty good. They're not actually flexing any of the limb, but it does make a difference. You want to tune your bow with your quiver on there and arrows in it. It is important that you do that, especially when you're trying to really fine tune and lock it down. So I recommend putting, get your silencers on there, get your quiver on there, get that quiver mounted on there, and then you are ready to start working on shooting the bow a little bit. Okay, If you take the bow and just start shooting it beforehand and try and tune it, you're going to have to do it all over again when you put this stuff together. So do it up front, get it done right off the bat. Now, we want to set our brace height, okay? What brace height is, is the distance between the grip of the bow, I will turn it this way for you, between this grip and the string. This distance right in here is your brace height right there. That's what you want to set. Now, when you buy your bow, you're probably going to get a recommended uh, ballpark what a brace height should be like uh like with uh you know like with my long bows i usually i generally shoot them somewhere between six and a half and seven inches on a recurve it might be seven and a half and to eight inches you'll your boyer will usually supply that um but again a lot of them don't you know they'll give you a ballpark but again there's no set rule to a brace height uh, it's whatever way you want it to be. I know guys that shoot these things down to six inches. Six inches of brace height distance in there. For me, I can't shoot six inches. When I shoot that, I start hitting my arm with that string. Uh, so it, basically for me, brace height is designed by when I hit my arm. So I shoot, and I shoot the same way with a straight grip longbow. I'm holding onto that bow nice and tight. And when I shoot that, if I'm hitting my arm, I want to go up higher in brace height, which makes it where I don't hit my arm. So for me... Like I usually shoot mine between six and three quarter and seven inches, right in the middle there. Um, if I if my string stretches enough that I get to about three quarter or six and three quarter, I'll start to feel that slightly rub in my arm, and I know I got to give it a couple of twists to tighten it up. So that's how I do it. Brace height will also impact the amount of noise from your bow. The higher the brace height, the quieter your bow will be. The lower the brace height, the more noise it can make, more vibration will be in there, but Generally, the lower the brace height, um, the faster it will shoot. It's usually best to aim for a lower brace height. Uh, the lowest brace, brace, brace height that you can get and not hit your arm is basically and have a good quiet bow is what you're looking for. Uh, I could care less about the speed of the bow, so that doesn't mean nothing to me. For me, it's all about not hitting my arm, and, and it just coincides with the fact that usually that's a six and three quarter to six and seven eighths uh, um, uh, brace height for me which means it's automatically going to be quieter but those are the way you're going to set it so whatever the range usually a bow, bow manufacturer isn't going to say set it at seven and a half he's going to say seven and a half to eight 
seven to seven and a half. On a longbow, six, six and a half to seven. You know, they're giving you a little bit of a range in there. You want to play with that. How you adjust that is you are going to twist the string up. Okay, the tighter you twist the string, the more distance will be in here, the higher the brace height will be. You will need a uh, uh, bow square like this. I'll put a link down below for a kit for this and a knock wrench. Only two tools you need. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive. You get the whole kit for like 12 bucks or whatever. I'll have a link below for you. But you will measure that distance that's on here between here and here. You stick that right there, you put it on there like that, and you can look at the numbers on there. Like I can see right now, I am at... When I go on here, I am at uh, I am at seven inches exactly right now. So you can see where you are and where that falls, and see where you're at on there. So you want to set that. So I'm I'm actually, and this is because the string's pretty new here on here too. So I'm still expecting a little stretch. But that distance in there is what you want to figure out for your brace height. Once you kind of have that established, and you're not hitting your arm, and you're liking the noise that's coming out of the bow with your either close arrows that you have, or even your bare shafts. Um, that you have. Once you have that established, then you're ready to really start tuning things and make stuff happen. Now, when it comes to bare shaft tuning, it's recommended to have a target that is a um, continuous medium, you know, rather than something that's like a bag target where it can, it can affect your arrows. But honestly, um, I used to do that. I used to have like a special block target that I only used for tooth bear shaft tuning to see my arrows and how they impact. And you know what? Now I do it on a bag target. It's just fine. I can see the arrow in flight and I can see what's happening and then I can fine tune it. So don't get too carried away with all that. You're, what you're looking for is you're looking for good flight out of this. So, um, but you're going to need a target. And you're going to want to put that target, in. I like to do it at about 10, 12 yards is where I like to shoot. Because then I can actually see what that arrow is doing in flight before it hits that target. But we have a brace height set, quivers on, silencers on, we're ready to go. Now what we want to do is we want to bear shaft tune with that bear shaft. No feathers on that arrow because we want to see what that actual arrow wants to do. The feathers are there to correct the arrow, but we don't want the feathers to correct the arrow. We want to see what the bow does to the arrow. So we want to start bear shaft tuning. Bear shaft, like I said, you just take the feathers off, shoot it with no feathers on there, put a tip weight on there that you're thinking you want to use, um, and a knock on the back. Have that arrow cut to length if you want, or leave it a little long so you can cut it back. We'll kind of cover that. But first thing I want to do is I want to get a rough knock height, okay? This knock that's on the string right here that you can see right on there, that little brass knock point, that has to be adjusted. It can be up and down on here. The key is to find a sweet spot on there so when you shoot, your arrow is going to come out not flying knock high, and also come out not flying knock low, but to have it where it comes out flying knock straight. That's the goal of that. Um, and so it can be different spots on this bow. Let me stick this one on here real quick and I'll spin it here for you. But So you can have it. It may vary from here to higher up to lower down. You can see the back of that moving up and down. So there's going to be some place on this string that you're going to want to have that that's going to give you that perfect knock height. How do you find that? Well, you start with, again, with your bow square. You're going to take this right here. You're going to stick it on here so that it's on the string, both clips right in there so that it's flush. And then you're going to slide it down. I'm going to get it on there so it's right. Like that. And you want to rest that right on your arrow shelf. So that sits right on there. And then you're going to look at where this knock height is. And it gives you measurements on here so you can kind of figure out where you're at on here. So you want to figure that out. I have mine set. I actually have a mark. You can see that mark on mine that I put on there, right there, I'm assuming, with the light coming in, hoping the light's catching it, but I have a mark on there, that little scratch mark, that's where I always put my knocks at. Um, but you can adjust that a little bit, but put it on there, get it pretty close, probably about somewhere quarter, half inch high, high from dead center, right across the middle of this. Uh, you're going to want to probably be about half inch, quarter inch high to start with. And then you're going to take that and you're going to shoot it and when you shoot it, the key thing is, notice I shoot with a cant, okay? So when I shoot, I shoot this way. I shoot with a canted bow like this is how I'm shooting. I cannot tune a bow very well when it's canted because it doesn't show me everything exactly. So you want to take that bow, take that arrow, put that arrow on there, get ready, and you want to take that out to your target, bare shaft on there, and you want to straighten that bow straight up and down, and then you want to draw it back and shoot it with it straight up and down, and you want to watch for that knock to go high 
or to go low when it's flying. When it hits that target, you want to see if it's hitting straight in a target or if it's hitting knock high or hitting knock low. Then you want to adjust that a little bit. Okay, it's good to get this set right now. So then what you want to do, if your knock is high, so when it's sticking in a target, you shoot, boom, it's in there, and that knock is up high like this, then you want to take and move, I wrote it right here for you, you want to take and move your knock point lower so that it's not shooting as high. And then if it's, I mean, simple concept on this, on the up and down. If it's too high, bring it down. If it's too low, then bring it up. Okay, now, uh, don't be concerned with getting it exactly perfect. So if it's sticking in a target and this is perfectly straight where it's perfectly straight, I'm looking at the screen there, it's perfectly straight. If you're hitting like this, that's okay. Don't worry about that. If you're hitting like this, we got a problem, but and you want to fix it. But if you're just a little bit high, that's fine. You're a little bit low, that's okay. We just want to get it pretty close right now, um, just so you're gonna, it's not going to impact your flight when you're doing your spine testing. So you have that knock point set at something that's pretty close and you got a pretty ballpark, rough knock height set. Now we need to work on your bare shaft for your spine. This could be a two hour one in it in its own right if we wanted to. This is a pretty, pretty involved process here because of the fact that what we need to do is we need to determine a lot of factors. First of all, you want your draw length and I like to shoot with about, uh, like I shoot a, uh, a, I got a 26 inch draw I like to shoot about a 27 and a half inch arrow. So I end up with about that much arrow sticking off the end of mine back there like that. Um, and I like that for me because it's, it's just where I want. But whatever distance your or your length is. So if you got a 28 inch draw, you're going to want to shoot at least a 29 inch arrow because you want some overhang. So you're not drawing that arrow past there. You're not cutting yourself with a broad head. You're probably going to want a tw an extra inch over what your draw length is or maybe an inch or an a half. So that gives you a ballpark. But... You got to figure that out. You also want to know what point weight you want to run on there. What the, what the actual head of the arrow is going to be. How much weight do you want to have up front? Um, because all these things are going to matter for that. When it comes to spine and an arrow flying, let me set this down here. Um, oh, by the way, these are the knock pliers that will be used to adjust that. Just sweet, simple, easy. I will put a link down below for you for them. They come in the kit with that thing, but just simple, easy little clamp on for your knocks. But with the arrow, you have Archer's Paradox, which means when that arrow comes off and you take and you draw back and you shoot that arrow, when it leaves, it is going to flex like this. Okay, I'm exaggerating on this angle, but it is going to flex. When you let go, it's going to flex in, flex out, flex in. It's going to work its way around that bow and keep flexing until it straightens itself out. There's the different stiffnesses or spine, as we call it, in these arrows will dictate how much flex you get out of that arrow shaft. Um, and there's a certain calculation for that for it to match your bow that you're actually shooting. So you want, and it's, it's impacted by different variables. One is the length of the shaft. The shorter a shaft gets the, in a specific spine, the shorter it gets, the stiffer it's going to be. The more weight you put up front, the weaker it's going to be. The more weight you put on the back or less weight up front, the stiffer it's going to be. So you have to take those things into consideration. You got Again, there's so many combinations and variables of this. It's very hard. There is no set rules, like I said, like you go back 15, 20 years ago, I could tell you by this size spine, put a 125 grain head on it, cut it at this length, and you're done, and it was easy. Also, your release. Whether you put too much pressure on your top finger when you draw, if you shoot split finger, but if you put too much pressure on his top finger, exaggerated like that and see it, or if you put too much pressure on your bottom fingers, like you're seeing here, all of that stuff impacts. If you pluck the string, if you are somebody who starts to slowly release and then let the string pop off your fingers, all of that stuff comes into play on your spine. So it's all impacted. Your form has got to be consistent for this to be finalized. But you want to get that bare shaft started. So let's just, you got to start somewhere. So you take your bare shaft, I would leave it a little long, and then I would pick the weight of the heads that you're planning on running because that one is the most expensive to constantly change out. Um, so have an idea of what you're looking for. Um, and again, a little research or a few questions to some people will help answer that stuff. Uh, so you know what you're looking for on there. So now you got your weight. So what you want to do is you want to shoot this. Now when you bear shaft this, this is for a right-handed person. 
if you're like me and left-handed, th these are reversed because of the fact that we're shooting the opposite side of the bow. But when you bear shaft for spine, when you take this and you shoot that arrow, again, you don't want to hold that bow on a can't. You want that bow straight up and down, a straight vertical bow so that you can see any left or right movement. If your bow is canted, that left and right movement's on a weird angle. And then you don't know if it's knock height influence. So hold your bow straight up and down. When you're doing that, just like that, bring it straight up and down, draw it back, and then shoot it. I, cause this, I get a little weird form when I do it that way, so I actually draw canted, come back in like I am, and then I move my body right up into vertical, and then I shoot it. Um, that way it just makes it a little more precise for me, and I'm getting the same equal draw length and everything. But you're going to then shoot it. When you shoot it, if your knock is left... Okay, that means if you're a right-handed shooter, knock is hitting, or it goes to the left and the point hits to the right. Knock to, which way are you facing? So knock to the left, point to the right. So from you, if you were shooting this arrow and it flies like this down range and sticks in that target that way, that's a weak spine. Okay, if your knock goes to the right and the impact goes to the left, which would be like this, it hits that way, that means you have a stiff spine. Now, the goal, in my opinion, you're better off having a stiff spine because you can fix that. If you've got a weak spine, the only thing you can do is shorten it up. Now, if you're pretty close, you're, you're pretty close, you're okay. So, uh, let's say that you, had, you could cut off a half inch and then uh, that would stiffen the spine up and would let you then start to see that arrow coming more straight like this, okay? But again, if it's knocked to the left, point to the right, that's going like that, that's weak. For a right-handed shooter, reverse for a left. Or if it's coming in this way, that's stiff on the spine. You have to get that so that it's flying straight center is what your goal is. And if it's too weak, all you can do is shorten up the spine or go lighter weight on the tip. Those are your two only options. Okay, cut the spine or cut the arrow shaft down shorter, which again, when you got a draw length, you may not be able to cut that too much shorter or you're going to run out of room on the re remaining part of that arrow. So you got to weigh that option. You can't cut it too short to where it's going to be like this. So you got to take that into consideration. You can go lighter on the head, but that means you have to change your broadhead field tips, all your stuff up there, and you may not like to be shooting a lighter weight arrow. I don't like lightweight arrows. So the best bet is that your spine comes in a little stiff. Okay, so you have that cut. You got it about that inch and a half that you want over or inch, you know, whatever you're at over, and that you're drawing it back. And, and uh, when you shoot, you're getting just that little bit of stiff. You're getting some stiff stuff, so it's not to the right. Okay, and then impacting over here to the left, so it's going to be like this. It's going to fly like that and hit there. When you're seeing that, that kind of makes me happy because that means that I can add weight to the front. I want a heavier arrow. So the more weight I can put up front, the happier I am. You may not feel that way. But if you're getting a stiff shaft, you can't cut it any shorter because if you do, it's just going to get stiffer. But you can make it weaker by adding more weight on the point. Okay, so whether you go from 125 grain uh, head to 150 to a 175 to a 200 to a 250, you can do all that stuff up here, and that is going to make the spine weaker and get you from being in that stiff flight to being in a more straight flight. That's the bear shaft aspect that you're looking for on there. So you want to get that fine tuned to where that shaft is flying. Straight and impacting that target straight, not to the left, not to the right. You want it flying straight. It may still be a little knock high or a little knock low. That's okay because you're again messing, cutting, changing heads, doing all this stuff. But once you have that left and right squared out of there, then just go back and recheck that knock height. Okay, pull that bow vertical, shoot it. If you're getting a little bit of tail high, correct it, move that knock point down. If you're shooting again and it's going a little knock low, Put that knock up a little bit. Sometimes, again, that is also influenced by how you hold the string on there, if it's even or not. Um, and, but uh, I, I would rather, you know, j that can be off a little bit, get it close, but it's better to have that maybe a little knock high or a little knock low than left and right. You want your spine set pretty good. Now, once you have that set, you basically have done everything you can. Now it's time to flex your arrows because you've bare shaft tuned them. You can shoot them through paper if you want, which is called paper tuning. You better have a solid release and your form better be spot on to make paper tuning work. And I don't have it. My release sucks. So I, I don't, I, I can get like a bullet hole one out of every six times. Or I, and I get very inconsistent rips. My 
bolt, I'm not that good at any of this stuff. So, um, and I don't care because my shafts, my bare shafts fly right. I don't need it to be a hundred percent per set, you know, where I'm shooting pure bullet holes. And I can, but I gotta work really hard at it to make it happen. And it's all in my release. Um, but don't be surprised if you're not. But you can shoot through paper, which is you put a piece of paper, newspaper or something on a picture frame, and then you get it out there five, eight feet in front of you, draw back, you shoot through it, and you should have a good solid hole going through that. Uh, if you're using fletching, you might have three perfect tears and one round bullet hole. That's what you're actually after for that. And you can take it to that level if you want to. But if you made it through the bear shafting, and that thing when you shoot it is flying straight, when you, you draw back and you let go, that arrow flies straight and it hits that target straight, that's good enough for me as far as I'm concerned, and I'm happy with that. So then you flex your arrows up, write down your brace height and your knock point. This is important because it's going to be specific for that bow. You want to know that distance that you have on that bow between the grip and the string. That's your brace height. Measure it, write it down on a piece of paper. Also, then measure your knock height from your square. So you put your square back on that string and measure that distance and see where that is and mark that down also so you have those. You now have your bow perfectly tuned. You now have your arrows that are perfectly tuned and set up for that bow. You have all of your stuff in order. You got your silencers on, you got everything ready, and now you're ready to practice with it, hunt with it, and have fun with it. That's the only setup that you can do to a traditional bow. There is no other options to these. They're sweet, they're simple, um, but all the tuning has to take place in the arrows. And the, in the bow, all you get to change is brace height on there and knock point height. The rest of it is all done through your arrows. So hopefully that gives you what you're looking for. It gets you started in the right direction. Again, when it comes to what arrow to use, so many variables out there. You can shoot light arrows, heavy arrows. You can shoot um, heavy weight up front, you know, high, which they call FOC, forward of center weight. Um, you can, I can go like I do and shoot almost 31% forward to center weight. You could be more of what we call a traditionalist and be in a 12-14% 12, 12, forward to center weight. Shooting a wood shaft with a 125 grain head or shooting carbons with custom double inserts in there and 450 grains up front like I'm using. I mean that balance point on that arrow is just insane on my arrow. You know, because again, I'm shooting heavy, heavy weight up front. There is no rhyme or reason. There is no one better than the other, or arguably. You can make it whatever works for you any way you want to. Me personally, I like to be at least 10 grains of arrow weight per pound of bow weight. So that means that if you're shooting a 65 or a 55 pound bow, I want 550 grains of total arrow weight. I like that. It makes the bow perform well and it transfers the energy from the limbs to the string, to the arrow most efficiently. You start getting below 10 grains per pound, I'm not quite a fan myself, but there's people that swear by being at seven, eight, and nine. Choice is yours, this just gives you the process on what to do. But don't think there's not some research and some things that you gotta figure out in the process. But once you do, you'll be real happy you did. Thanks for watching, talk to you later, bye.